Ichi viewers and random Ghostbusters fans, today I will be reviewing this, which is the LEGO Ideas, formerly LEGO Kuzo, Ghostbusters Ecto-1 set. And here it is in its box, which looks a bit bland. At the top we have both the LEGO and Ghostbusters logos, the new LEGO Ideas logo at the bottom corner, and you can also make out that the box is lined with this yellow and black hazard tape design there too, while the set is for 10 years and up. Like I said, the design on the front of the box is pretty bland and basic. I mean, yeah, we do get a nice big image of the Ecto-1 itself, but there's a lot of wasted space around it. The design of the open front doors of the firehouse is visible behind this green smoke effect here, which is nice, but I would have liked it to have been much more prominent. Even the minifigures don't seem to be doing anything exciting. Ray and Winston look like they're having a nice chat in the background there. The design on the back of the box, however, looks so much more exciting. We get an image of the back of the car and three of the Ghostbusters crossing the streams, which looks much more dynamic and I would have preferred a version of this on the front of the box. Down one side you get this film roll design which shows you how to remove the roof of the car to access the interior, plus you can see a Ghostbusters 30th anniversary logo at the bottom. I particularly like how the Egon minifigure is quite prominent on this box, as you can see him there uttering the famous line from the Ray Parker Jr. song, and it's even used as the 1 to 1 scale size comparison minifigure on the top of the box, but it's unclear if this is a tribute to Harold Ramis or just coincidence. Opening it up you can see the interior is black and it contains some clear plastic bags filled with Lego pieces. Six in total of varying sizes. Also included is an instruction booklet which is quite thick. But anyway, enough about the packaging. It's time to get this set built. So cue the time lapse. <laughs> So, here we have the Acto 1 and four Ghostbusters minifigures. And I have to admit, this looks so very, very awesome. Taking a look at the car, first of all, considering it's all built from regular LEGO pieces, it's very impressive. The front has been recreated exceptionally well with the two headlights on either side of the grille, the rounded sections underneath, and even the little Ecto-1 license plate has been included, showing much attention to detail. The hood looks great and even includes window wipers, while you can see a blue light attached to the side of the car there as well. The wheel arch is present below, and even though the wheels themselves are incredibly thick, the design of them really does mirror the the wheels of the actual car. I particularly love that even though it's all built from bricks, which should make it look rather blocky, the sides are actually quite rounded and match the screen used vehicle. The new Ghost logo is of course present on the side, and the back wheel is partially covered at the top as well. Now, I really like this. Not only have the red wings been included at the back, but the red trim leading to them can be seen running from the front of the car up to them, finishing off at the rear of the vehicle with the elongated red tail lights. The back of the car looks excellent. It features the grey bumper at the bottom with another Ecto-1 license plate, and those rounded panels with the No Ghost logo present as well. The other side is just really the same, but I really wish that this piece here had been made of thinner plastic, as it's meant to bend and tuck in under the lights at the top of the car, instead of sticking out like an antenna as it does here. Looking at the roof rack, it contains a large amount of detail. Comparing it with my Hot Wheels Elite Ecto-1, you can see that while some of the pieces are rather chunky, all of the detail from the car has been recreated here in some form, and all from original LEGO pieces, be it the flashing blue lights, the green and yellow canisters, or even this clear satellite dish which is clearly doubling for the transparent dome on the actual car. The ladder to the roof rack has also been included, which extends from the top of the car all the way down to the side, and on the other side two blue hoses are attached to the roof rack, which clip into place on the actual body of the vehicle. To access the interior, the entire roof can be removed. I like to use the blue hoses as a sort of hinge, so I pull the roof up and disconnect it, then fold it over to the side. The interior itself is a little bit bland. It's grey and brown, but I like how the section where the gurney which holds the proton packs has been included, although none of the minifigures packs could be stored here. 
In fact, there's very little room on the interior to house the figures. You could fit in two, maybe three at the most, but not all four, plus their equipment. On top of that, the steering wheel has been placed in the centre of the vehicle, which I find kind of annoying. But on the plus side, I love this little computer piece included in the middle of the vehicle, which represents the bank of equipment featured in the interior of the actual car. Finally, the windows do look good, and the ones featured on the sides are constructed in a very clever way, although they aren't really held on very securely as they're just clipped onto these pieces, which aren't exactly stable. So overall for detail, apart from a few minuscule issues, I love this. It's a remarkable design and really does resemble the movie used car perfectly. Turning to the minifigures, as always, they look adorable. All four have pretty much the same body, which is coloured cream to match their jumpsuits, and on the chest we get a little printed detail of the jumpsuit itself, with the straps for the proton pack, the zip up the middle, the pockets and collar and belt. You can also see the name tags on each do not include their surname, as the figures are far too small for the lettering to be visible. So instead the tags sport the character's initials, while on the back you can make out this brace for the pack, which includes a name tag of the character's first name and a no ghost logo. For the most part, the faces do match the actors, with Winston and Egon being particular highlights, although while I nailed Egon's hair, the rest leave a lot to be desired, as I never recall Stan sporting the curtains look, Zed Moore's looks slicked back, and as for Peter, his hair is far too long and spiky. But fortunately the four figures contain that alternate facial expression feature, so the heads can do a 180, and when the hair is turned around, a scared expression is revealed, which is a great little inclusion. All four Ghostbusters naturally come with their proton packs. They are quite basic, but then again they are very small. I like the vent section on the back, but the front is rather bare, despite that excellent rounded section with the cyclotron design printed onto it at the bottom. The cable is made from a black whip, while the Neutrona wand is a black lightsaber hilt, so you do have to admire the creativity and resourcefulness used when designing this set. The wand can be removed from the pack and eclipses easily into the figure's hand. Other accessories include two generic Lego walkie-talkies and a trap, which looks good considering its size and the small amount of Lego pieces used to create it. What baffles me is that no PKE meter has been included for Egon. Come on guys, a pneumatic drill doubles for one so easily. Finally, the minifigures can be displayed on this white base, which includes a no-ghost logo in the centre and a yellow and black hazard tape design running through it, sort of reminiscent of the side of the Ecto-1A. It's worth quickly talking about the instruction booklet. As I said, it's very thick due to the fact that the Ecto-1 contains a lot of little details and pieces which have to be carefully added onto it, so the instructions are very precise and easy to follow. Not only that, but as you build you will come across some quotes from the movie, which have been peppered into the instructions. Not only that, but the actual character who said it appears beside the quote in his minifigure form. The booklet also offers some background information on the Ecto-1 car itself, the movie and its origins, images of the four Ghostbusters from the film, and a quick interview with the designers, which gives you a fascinating insight into how the model came to life, making it an excellent companion piece to the car and figures. Doing a size comparison, you can see just how small the Ecto-1 is when compared to the 118 scale Hot Wheels version, but it is of course much bigger than the 143 scale Ecto-1A. The minifigures all follow the same basic template, so they fit in perfectly with all the other minifigures released over the years. So overall, what do I think of this toy? Well, I absolutely adore it. The sheer attention to detail here is remarkable. Comparing it to another 1980s movie car produced by Kuzo, the Back to the Future DeLorean, you can see just how good it looks. The DeLorean is quite blocky and chunky in contrast, basically like it's made from Lego. But with the Ecto-1, so much more care and time has apparently been put into its design, giving it the rounded sides, the red wings and the license plates. Even the roof rack is an almost perfect Lego recreation of the one seen on the actual car. The build quality, aside from the windows, is very strong. Speaking of which, while the instructions are very clear and concise, building the set can be quite tedious and repetitive in places. The minifigures all look great and definitely resemble their respective characters from the movie. While it is unfortunate that they and their accessories cannot all fit into the car and that the roof has to be removed to access the interior, 
In the end, I don't really think it matters, and ultimately that's why this base has been included for them, as they aren't meant to be crammed into the vehicle where they can't be seen properly, but instead are meant to be placed up on display alongside the car. Comparing this finished set to the initial Kuzo entry, you can see that it's very different in some places. For the most part, the Ecto-1 has been changed for the better, becoming much more streamlined. I do have to admit that I prefer the original minifigures however, especially that little trap accessory. But of course the set is constructed from pre-existing Lego pieces, so the trap and Venkman's hair have been substituted for pieces which already exist. Because if Lego were to specifically create pieces for this set, there's no real guarantee that could be used in future kits. In the end, this is a fantastic set. It combines two of my all-time favourite things, Ghostbusters and Lego. And I'm pretty sure the 8 year old version of me, somewhere in the back of my head, just exploded from too much awesomeness. And so that brings us to the end of this review. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to stay subscribed for more videos, and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thanks again for watching, and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye.